have something over here called the sourpuss and, and the huggy bear. It sounds like you're trying to appeal to uh, to a female demographic because these all sound like pussy beers to me. They are. What's going on? Uh, well, you know, the female clientele is definitely going to the craft beer industry. It's definitely an yeah. industry we are tailoring some of these beers too. Okay. Uh, the sour program, so we've been doing it for about three and a half, four years now. And of course, sour is, uh, is, is huge. It is. Several years ago, uh, sour beers were not sought after. I was right. uh, basically inspecting the beer that people would dump. Nowadays, you're purposely inspecting your beer. Like the hop is in specific disease, big taste profiles, and the females are a big portion of that. Right, right, right. It's right. fantastic. Uh, the names are just kind of fun to play with. Sour Bulls, Lucky Bear, uh, Century, kind of out there. Colors again, you know, purple. Let me, let me show you a little bit of the uh, the colors of the cans here. Look at this. Check this out. How crazy is that, right? For a beer, a manly drink, for a lot of years. So I'm seeing mango, and I'm going, I've never heard of a mango beer before. And initially I went, well, I'm not much for fruit flavored beers. And I came over and tried it, and I have to say, Tyler, outstanding. Thank you. I mean, it's got, you have the hoppiness in there. It's very dry, but you definitely taste the mango. So we actually threw fresh pure mango from Mexico into the beer itself as a fermented uh, okay. uh, So we don't have any extracts, there's no syrup, no sugar, there's no calcium. So you're doing the mango bed in the boil? Or I should boil. Yeah, okay. Okay. A lot of people will add extracts or they'll add purees in a second berry. Yeah, yeah, we've also had other breweries that actually put it into the bright taste, okay. uh, which, which is specifically for the extracts. Uh, it just has a crappy flavor. Crappy flavor. It's just not real. Yeah. So we actually, again, import that to Oregon fruits with some fresh orange puree from Mexico. And we boil it in there. It comes out awesome. It's not over the sugary. Very cool. Where is the brewery out of? Uh, we're out of Boise, Idaho. So we're turning 21 this year. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Finally a legal drink. Yay, we're there. We're finally made. <laughs> Long time coming. <laughs> and uh, just real quick, for people at home, if, if they're looking to go out and try and find this, pretty widely available across the country. Uh, we are in the Pac Northwest. We're in eight states. Uh, okay. We're in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Nevada now. Uh, Montana, Wyoming, and Alaska. I thought that was Utah. Utah. Well, we have Utah, Utah but Utah's Utah. a 3-2. It's a yeah, little different. So, how do, do you have to do a different, I mean, do you just have like your Utah stash over on one side? Uh, we do. We have two beers that we do for Utah. We have a High Lake Session, session IPA. Okay. Uh, it's an 85 IBU. It's only 3.2% uh, alcohol. And then we have our Holy Butter Wheat. So, it's a wheat, it's a and that's it. And our Niagara Falls IPA, our flagship, mango, sour, and uh, so let me break this down for you guys. If you have a woman at home who's a little persnickety and she likes to do her wine coolers on the weekend or what have you, or she likes something that says mango or is pink and says sourpuss, you can kind of, uh, you know, you can kind of lead her along to graduating her to some beers that have some actual real character and some hoppiness but are put in a nice package that she might enjoy. So again, think about the Mango IPA, the uh, Sockeye Pilsner, the Sour Puss, the Huggy Bear, and nothing spells loving like Huggy Bear. That's right. Um, it's some amazing stuff. You guys are uh, very avant-garde, I'm digging it. Awesome, thank you. From Sockeye Brewing, it's Two Dudes Reviews.